CS CFL episode two. Is this well, episode two? This is our first time in the, our new format, Andy, but this is technically our second show of this season. Absolutely. So we're trying something a little new, guys. We're not just going to release this as an audio podcast, but, and for those of you who are already watching, you know this, but we're also going to release these shows in video format as well, similar to our local sports shows, if you've ever seen those. So we're going to try to tighten it up a little bit, yep. shorten it up, get some segments going, uh, but we're going to release in video format. So uh, youtube.com slash first down sports podcast is where you would find that. That's right. And in when you're in our YouTube uh when you're in our YouTube uh, channel at YouTube, yep. um, there is playlists, and this will be you'll find all these in the CFL playlist. You know how to we use have YouTube. lots of other U- YouTube videos there, but this will be in our CFL playlist. Awesome! Now this is a special episode. It's the preseason just finished up. We're heading into Week One. We're really excited about that. Now a lot of the things that we're going to do week to week, we're going to be talking about or at least reacting to a few things that happened in the previous game. So this is a special week, but we filled the void with something awesome. We're going to quickly run through a few things, but we're going to finish this episode up with an interview yes. with uh, the owner or soon-to-be owner, Optimism, Optimism, right, Ray? Yeah. Of the Atlantic Schooners, Mr. Anthony LeBlanc. He's going to give us a call in. We're going to chat with him about all kinds of things. We're going to try to pour some water on some of the negative fires flying around on social media, not only about the Atlantic Schooners and their stadium. But touchdown Atlantic. But touchdown Atlantic here in Moncton. So anyways, Ray. Do you want to talk about week one? Week one. I mean, we got to be excited about this, right? So on Thursday, which is two days from now, so if you're listening to this on Wednesday, well, we recorded it the day before. Uh, we have Saskatchewan traveling to Hamilton. Uh, on Friday, we got Montreal playing uh, in Edmonton. We've got Ottawa at Calgary on Saturday, and the second game uh, on Saturday is Winnipeg at BC right now. What we're going to do, we're going to pick these games, but f- every week when we do this, we're going to alternate. One of us needs to choose a lock of okay. the week. Yeah. The other one needs to choose an upset of the week. All right. And this isn't always going to be easy, but you know what? I'll take the upset of the week. Good, because I got the lock. Perfect. And uh, it's week one, so it might be debatable whether there is an upset That's uh, right. available. But let's give it a try. Who do you got in the uh, the Thursday game, Saskatchewan at Hamilton? Saskatchewan at Hamilton. That is a great game right off the uh, off the bat for week one. Um, new coach, new coordinator oh, yeah. in Hamilton, mm-hmm. but you still have a lot of the same pieces on the offense and, and, and defense. I think uh, Hamilton could be in for a good year this year if Mazzoli can continue to play the way he played last year. Yep. Um, I, I will take Hamilton in this game against the Rough Riders. Perfect. Listen, I've, I've read all kinds of power rankings, and I listened to all the other CFL shows that are previewing the first week, and the East is an absolute wild card with the exception of Hamilton. They seem yep. to be the consensus team at the top. Ray, I think they uh, I think they open the season with a little bit of a letdown. I think Saskatchewan and their new head coach and all their pieces are going to roll into town, and they're going to take out the Hamilton Ticats week one. And, and uh, get get this. That's not even my upset. Wow. All right. Wow. I got Saskatchewan winning in Hamilton. Okay. All right. Friday night game. Montreal visits Edmonton. They've got a shiny new quarterback who just happens to be your favorite quarterback. You often refer to him as your brother. Uh, You consider him a personal friend. It's actually a little bit weird. But anyway, uh, who do you got in this game? Well, I'm I'm actually waiting to hear from my brother again. I can't wait to talk to him again. We haven't talked to him since he's made the move to Edmonton. We were <laughs> supposed to have him on the show uh, during the drive to Edmonton. Yeah, it just it didn't work out for us. But we will be talking to my brother, Trevor Harris, again at some point down the road. And there is <clears throat> no way I'm going against my brother. I'm taking Trevor Harris in this game over Montreal. And in your upset of the week, folks, Montreal hits the road, what? travels all the way out west, rolls into Edmonton, Pipkin, and all that that new revamped offense. Sherman's out of town. Uh, I think Montreal is going to shock the world and shock your bro, Trevor Harris, and Montreal is going to get the win on the road. Wow. That's my upset of the week. All right. All right. Saturday, the early game, we got Ottawa at Calgary. Let's hear it, Ray. What a great, you know, you guys know over the last few years, I've been 
pulling for the Red Blacks because of my brother, Trevor Harris. But <laughs> I don't know what to expect out of Ottawa this year. Yeah. With all the changes, Powell's gone, uh, Ellingson's gone, Harris has gone. I really don't know what to expect out of Ottawa this year. I got to go Calgary all the way. Yeah. Bo Levi Mitchell's back after his quick little uh, discussion about going to the NFL. He's back with the CFL, signed with the Calgary, and I think he'll be motivated to get back to the Great Cup this year. Yeah, 100%. I've got Calgary as well. And if I was picking a lock this week, that was my lock. Okay. Second game uh, of the on Saturday, Winnipeg is visiting BC. Mike Riley, all the excitement going on in BC. They lost a lot. They gained a lot. Uh, Winnipeg, not sure what's going on there with the quarterback situation. Can't wait to find out uh, because we're going to talk fantasy in a little bit here. And maybe maybe uh, Nichols is dinged up a little bit because I know Strevler was cheap or sorry more expensive. Yeah. At TSN CFL Fantasy. So that I mean we got to get more plugged into this. We got to get more plugged into our CFL headlines, which Obviously. we will be doing after this week preseason. It's tough to watch. It, really, it doesn't matter what league you're watching. Preseason's tough to watch, especially for us Atlantic Canadians folks who don't have a team of our own. So you know we, we tend to we're trying our best not to be more invested in the local sports scene as well as the NFL yeah. happens a little bit. Ray, I got Winnipeg winning on the road and taking out BC and uh, and spoiling Mike Riley's debut in BC. If you're gonna go crazy, you might as well go crazy in week one. Might as well go crazy in week one. Listen, I love the Blue Bombers. I love the defense that they have there. But don't forget, BC's defense played very well at the end of last year. Um, Mike Riley's first game in BC. I got to take the Lions. I got to take the Lions to win that game. Fair enough. All right, I'm not letting you out of here without reminding you that your responsibility was give a, given a lock, and I don't remember you locking anything up. I locked in my brother. Trevor Harris Got and it. the Ed Edmonton Eskimos. Must have missed that one. In week one. All right, before we get to our interview with uh, with uh, Mr. LeBlanc, we are so excited about this. Again, we are dying to get our team out here in the Maritimes, so anytime we can talk to this guy. By the way, he's the most forthcoming, positive guy, uh, so he, makes, he brings all my optimism back every time we talk to him. Before we get into that, Ray... CFL Fantasy. We've yep. got our first down sports group uh, up and running once again. If you well, guys want to take us on, just DM one of us or ping one of us or tweet one of us, whatever it is, and we'll send you the, the link. Our, our buddy Ray Perkin will flip the link to you. You can That's go right. against us. But let's talk about our opening, uh, our opening week lineups. Um, this could be a bit of a wild card, uh, just as much as picking the games. Yeah. Do you want me to run through mine first? Go ahead. All right, listen. You got to pair the quarterback with uh, with one of his receivers or a running back or something. You got to go big. You got to take risks if you're going to succeed in CFL fantasy. Last year worked out for me a few weeks. Blew up on my face and a few others. My quarterback is going to be Antonio Pipkin. Uh, I think that he's going to shine in fantasy. I think they're going to be playing from behind uh, to, to, to pull off that upset. Yeah. I think he's going to be throwing the ball a lot, but I think he's probably going to score uh, on the ground at least once too. Okay. Uh, running back, my, my favorite running back from last year that was a real fantasy disappointment really in it, but I'm giving him a chance, C.J. Gable in Edmonton. I think Trevor Harris is a little different than Mike Riley. I think they're going to hand the ball off a lot more with Trevor Harris playing in Edmonton. Yeah. So I think C.J. Gable is going to get a chance to shine. I'm going Jeremiah Johnson, uh, one of the running backs in Montreal. My wide receiver, Brian Burnham. Nice. Uh, Mike Riley, we're going to see how he can use Burnham. Uh, and Mark Heath Ambles in uh, Calgary. Okay. So so should be a big target for Bo Levi Mitchell. At least I'm hoping he is. My flex this week is Eugene Lewis of Montreal. So another one of Pipkin's guys to try to boost that score. And at least for this week, I'm not going to sell out. I'm going to pick a defense. And I got to go with... The team I play uh, that I'm all in on this week, I'm going with the Alouettes defense against <laughs> your brother and and my my personal um, acquaintance. Yeah, uh, I mean I got his phone and my I got his number on my phone. Yeah. That counts, right? Yeah, Trevor Harris. I'm going with the Alouettes defense, Ray. There you go. What do you got going on? Well, Andy, they say in fantasy football you're never going to be successful if you pick your entire team from one team. Is that correct? Well, I, I don't think anybody's ever wasted their time saying that. I think that goes but without saying. I think it goes but, without saying. Okay. But what if you pick your entire team from one province? I think that's that's more doable in the CFL, I suppose. It well, might be a little reckless, but is that is that what we're dealing I, with? I did something that I didn't even realize what I did until I, I, I finished up 
picking all my players, but okay. that's exactly what I did. The province of Alberta is going to be well represented here. My quarterback is Bo Levi Mitchell. My running backs are C.J. Gable from Edmonton, Charlie uh, Power from Cal from Calgary. Yep. I got Greg Ellison. Oh, of course you do. Got to match him up. Of course right? you do. Yeah. Uh, I got Eric Rogers from Calgary to go with Bo. I got Kenny Stafford, mm. uh, my flex player for Edmonton, and I'm going with the Calgary Stampeders defense against the Ottawa Red Blacks. All right, it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. One province, one province. Next show, we'll update. We'll see who wins this. I like my chances. I think Pipkin's gonna gonna take this home for me. All but, right. Uh, but listen, they, they what they do say because I read it on an article on CFL.ca. Five tips to be good at fantasy is you got to take risks, and I feel like I'm. I've taken a few this week. So. All right. All right. Listen, we can't wait to uh, to dive into this format again after week one, get into those games. But now on to the main event in this particular show. We're going to transition over to our, and we're going to close it out with our interview with Anthony LeBlanc. Catch you guys next week. See you next week, guys. On the phone with us is Anthony LeBlanc, part of the ownership group for the Atlantic Schooners. Now, Anthony, we're going to get into a little bit of Touchdown Atlantic, but before we do that, can we get a little update from you on the Schooners since the last we've heard from you? Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a whole lot. That, and first off, thanks for having me on, guys. It's, uh, it's great to be on with you. Um, it, there's not a whole lot new to uh, publicly disclose other than, you know, I'm, I'm calling you from Halifax, which is my, my new home away from home. Uh, working away diligently with uh, with our partners at Canada Lands Company uh, in regards to the uh, the work we need to finalize before we can put that firm final proposal in front of uh, the Halifax Regional Municipality. Uh, and uh, I, I've kind of fallen on the sword over the last few months about trying to avoid putting out these arbitrary deadlines. Mm -hmm. And I'll I'll kind of paraphrase my, my my old friend Jeff Hunt, who's part of the Ottawa Red Blacks group. And he used to like to say uh, that they're close to seven-year odyssey. It'll get done when it gets done. Mm. We continue to be very, very bullish. You know, one thing that I will say, you know, talking with a number of elected officials here in and around HRM, uh, obviously this year is an election year federally, but next year is an election year municipal, in municipal elections uh, here in Nova Scotia. And nobody wants to see this become one of those municipal election uh, issues. So I think everybody's working hard and diligently to try to get everything wrapped up so that council can make a thoughtful decision sometime this calendar year. Great. Um, we were talking to you at the the press conference for Touchdown Atlantic a little bit, and you've been doing a great job staying away from those from those timelines, like you said. Uh, you thought potentially maybe we would hear something by the Touchdown Atlantic game about the Schooners. Um, again, I'm not. You just told us you're not setting timelines, so I'm not asking you for one. But is that realistic at all? Or I noticed you changed the calendar year here all of a sudden. So maybe. yeah, no. I, look, I I think it's it's you know reasonable. Uh, and something that I would certainly hope is that there is some kind of activity. You know, maybe it's as it, it certainly wouldn't be a small thing when we put a, a, you know a final proposal in front of HRM. Yeah. But I, I feel comfortable that should happen. But again, if you would have asked me a year ago, I would have thought it would would have been done nine months ago. These things just you know they they, they take time. They're you know any anytime you're involving you know public sector in any manner. Uh, you you have to be not that you're not always thoughtful in business, but you have to be extra thoughtful. So these things just take time, uh, and you know, we, as I said, we continue to be optimistic. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of strong supporters out there. In particular, after uh, we had the commissioner uh, here in Dartmouth uh, back a few months ago, and, and we unveiled our our partnership with Sport Nova Scotia, I think that was tremendously received, and that continues to be very well received. But you know, there's a you know, a lot of work left to be done. But we, we feel like we're in the red zone. Let's just leave it. Let's use the football vernacular and leave it there. I like it. Sounds good. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I, I wanted to ask you about uh, when we talk about the schooners is, is the stadium, just just the stadium itself real quick. Like, we we keep hearing different stories about what the potential stadium could look like, what it could feel like. Um, and last year, Andy and I, we went on a little three-city tour in the CFL. We went to see a game in Hamilton. We went to Toronto, and then we went to Ottawa. Uh, to see games and I'm curious Anthony when you look at the stadium that that 
uh, is being talked about with the municipality in Halifax. Will will this stadium provide us a game game day experience like those stadiums that I just mentioned? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think it will. I mean, obviously, what we have done is again, and I try to you know, use my words wisely, but I I think what we've done has been thoughtful as to how we can build this in a manner that is appropriate for the region, appropriate for all stakeholders, but also sufficient for CFL play. So to your point about, you know, the, the game day experience has to, to meet or, you know, humbly exceed those levels of the, the cities that you mentioned, I, I'm confident that will happen. If, if I look at those, those stadiums, I think it's kind of a combination of Ottawa and Hamilton. And why I say that is if, if you look at Ottawa, you have, you know, the new, I guess that's the south side. Uh, and then the north side is the old, um, you know, the old section of, of the, um, the building that backs into the hockey arena. I think how we're looking at doing this now is we'll have a more robust, um, you know, one side of the stadium that'll be a completely permanent structure uh, that we will do in conjunction with Sport Nova Scotia, uh, which will be really the focus of, you know, and we'll have all of the required, uh, you know, team spaces and, and uh, locker rooms and all of that good stuff. But as, as we've indicated, our plan for the initial years to, you know, reduce the cost uh, and reduce the risk to, in, in particular, public sector stakeholders, is we as the schooners will then put up, actually, you know, the w- best way to look at it is the new structure at your Moncton Stadium is kind of what we're thinking about for that other sideline, where it, it isn't temporary, but it's also, you know, a pretty basic structure, um, which would have, you know, still have the facilities that are necessary but the combination of those two sides will bring the capacity of the facility for CFL games up into the 22 to 24,000 uh, range. It will still provide the opportunity for those end zone spaces like you see in most of the new CFL buildings. Uh, but it will also give us the ability to, to add in phases as necessary down the road. Great. Great. And great segue. Let's talk a little bit about the Moncton uh, Stadium and what's going on here. Now, Anthony, just full disclosure, we know that you're you're aware of the Facebook group. Let's talk uh, Atlantic Schooners and the various other things going on there. And you guys are active on Twitter. I'm curious, how plugged in are you to the conversation going on on social media regarding the Schooners and Touchdown Atlantic? Sometimes I feel like fans blur the lines between these two things and treat them like they're the same entity for whatever reason. But how plugged are in to those groups and those conversations and those comments are you? Um, you know, and when I ask you that, I'm not at the same time asking you if you're taking a lot of it seriously because social media is social media and uh, and so on. But uh, how aware of you? Uh, where are you of those conversations? Oh, I, I think it's fair to say that, you know, unless you have your head completely in the sand, <laughs> and then I don't think that you're going to be, you know, a good partner or a good operator, you, you definitely want to keep your finger on the pulse. And yes, I mean, look, social media is a beautiful thing, but it's also a nightmare at times. Oh, yes. uh, but, it, it, it's, it's, but it is a great way for you to complete, you know, not completely understand, but to, to get a good sense of what the public is thinking. And look, I, I will be the first to fall on the sword that, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take all of the, the blame, so to speak, but I think we can be doing a better job and we will be doing a better job uh, in regards to the touchdown Atlantic. Look, right. you know, in our defense, and, uh, you know, just this came, this was an opportunity that came late to us. We weren't able to finalize an agreement with an appropriate venue, which is, of course, the, the wonderful um, stadium in Moncton. Uh, but we weren't able to do that until just a few months ago. Mm-hmm. And these things, you know, uh, uh, they, they take time. They, uh, if it, it would be great to be able to to have a do over, and and we would have been working on this in the fall of last year. That's not reality. And we also realize that you know there's a number of people who are concerned about the accessibility of the game from a financial standpoint. So look, we are working diligently with our partners. And when I say that, I mean obviously the CFL, obviously the city of Moncton, the province of New Brunswick, but also our potential and currently signed sponsors that have not been announced yet. And they're the names of, of people that or people will understand these organizations immediately. And these are groups that have put their hands up, that they want to help and ensure that people have access to this game. So, yeah. you know, there's that. There's also, you know, what are the festivities that we're planning in and around the game and not just in Moncton? What are we looking at doing in other parts of Atlantic Canada? And we've also teased that we've worked very closely with a couple of uh, tour bus operators to ensure that uh, people that want to come from other parts of the Maritimes have a very cost-effective effective and friendly way of doing so 
And the, the, the very last thing I'll say is what we've already announced, which we heard loud and clear, people did not want an evening game. So we worked closely with our friends at, at, at the league, at TSN and RDS. We've been able to make that change. That was the first one we wanted to get out there. But it, it, it's fair to say, and I will put myself on a deadline on this one, that in the next couple couple to three weeks, there will be a significant update, um, you know, lack of a better term, a relaunch of Touchdown Atlantic. Look, this is a great property. It's a great game. Uh, but, you know, I'll be the first to fall on the sword and say we, we haven't done as good of a job putting this this out there. And we're going to do what we need to do to fix that. Gotcha. You know, it, it's funny, Anthony, when, when you talk about promotions for this game, I don't put it all on you or the schooners or the ownership group. It's funny, the media itself here in Atlantic Canada, I mean, you pick up, uh, you know, one of the Times and Trips transcript newspapers or one of the other newspapers in the region, the sports section in those newspapers is very slim. There's not a lot of news in those, in, 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 in those sections. And, and my question, or I guess my comment more than anything is, I'm really surprised at the lack of promotion of this game by the Moncton City Council, who was really fighting to get this game, as well as local media here. It seems like whenever you're at an event to talk about either one of these subjects, everybody is there to talk about it. And then once you step back to do your thing and, 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 and we get closer, I find the communication from the media outlets, it's just not there. Do you have any reason or, or any thoughts on why it wouldn't be? You know, it's interesting. I, I, I think back when you make those comments to my four years as, as one of the owners and president and CEO of the Arizona Coyotes of the NHL, and I used to hear a very similar, you know, uh, opinions from fans and sponsors that the Coyotes didn't get the appropriate amount of, of love, so to speak, from the local media than, you know, the Cardinals or the Diamondbacks or the Suns. But, you know, while I'd love it if every day the front page of the newspaper was talking about the sports team that I'm a part of, it, it, the onus is on us to ensure that we put something out there that people want to talk about. And, yes, I do think that, you know, this this game is an exciting game. But at the same time, you know, I, I understand that there's a healthy dose of skepticism that we have to overcome about the long-term plans. And I think that's what I'm seeing is people, you know, they don't want to get a little bit pregnant with this one. They want to get behind this wholeheartedly and know that there is an end game, which means a long-term team in Atlantic Canada. And so, look, again, I'm, I would I, would I appreciate if, if, as I said, that every day people were talking about it? Of course I would. But as I said to you a few minutes ago, I think we mean, and, and sure, I don't take the full brunt of this. And I, I mean, I've talked to as recently as yesterday to Commissioner Ambrosi about all of this. And this is a market we are committed to. And we all know that we have to do a better job of ex you know, putting the excitement out there for the local sports media to be talking about this. And I think that's going to come. I think a number of things will happen. I mean, obviously, we've got the CFL season, regular season kicking off this week. That gets people excited. Um, and, and, you know, when we kind of come out with a rebranding of the Touchdown Atlantic, then sometime and hopefully in the near future, not putting deadlines, uh, you know, there's updates in regards to our, our long-term plans uh, vis-a-vis our uh, proposal to HRM. I think all of those things will start to generate that excitement, but it would be, you know, it, it would be almost uh, just not appropriate for us to expect that we'd be getting nonstop, you know, conversation in the media when we, you know, it, for our own reasons, aren't putting a lot out there until we have more meat on the bone. Gotcha. Well, and and I think you've touched on a lot of the the major topics that are swirling in social media. The things that Ray and I are honestly just getting sick and tired of hearing. Um, I'm gonna double click on two of them here really quickly to see, um, sure. you know, and and if you can comment at all, that'd be great. If not, no big deal. But here's two things. Uh, obviously, the lack of marketing here in Moncton, and that being uh, uh, to blame for people saying there are an enormous number of tickets still available. Um, that's one. I believe you've already kind of gotten into that, but here's the thing. Number one, ticket prices. I'm so sick of hearing about the ticket prices every day on Twitter from somebody in, in Western Canada, you know, or anywhere in Canada, they're saying, you know, they set the ticket prices way too high for touchdown Atlantic. What were they thinking? They're going to have a half a stadium full, uh, filled with people. If that, um, you know, and my comment sometimes to them is just, well, there's a lot of hands in that pot. We have no idea what, you know, what went into setting these prices. So I'm wondering if you can comment on that a little bit, just in terms of where did that number come from? Is there an opportunity at all for it to move? Because you were touching on a few things earlier. And then the other thing, and I'm sorry to hit you with two there, but I, I'd like you to get talking on a roll here. But the other thing is continuing to hear people say this is going to be an absolute embarrassment. And my 
My comment to them on that is how can you call something an embarrassment if you don't understand the goal? So I want to ask you, Anthony, as you know, you're a businessman. What's the if somebody asks you what's the goal of Touchdown Atlantic so that you could define success? What would what would you define that as? What is the goal for the Touchdown Atlantic game from from your stance? Well, I mean, so I'll start with the, the second question first. You know, sure. what are our goals? I mean, look, if you have the opportunity to bring, you know, the CFL to the market that you're looking at being a part of earlier than, you know, when you kick off as a team, I just think you have to take that opportunity because it's, to your point, it's it's an inflection point that gets people excited in talking about what, what your plans are. Mm-hmm. So it, it, success for me will be exactly what you just talked about, which is people are excited and not, not just people in Moncton. As I said, we'll be rolling out some plans that, you know, involve all aspects of the Maritimes over that weekend. Um, you know, it's, it's getting people excited about the Canadian Football League. And I get it. it the Maritimes, there was a, you know, there was a, I think it was whatever, an opinion piece in one of the newspapers this past couple of days uh, where someone talked about his affinity for the NFL and, and, you know, as opposed to the CFL, and therefore you need lower ticket prices to get him to a CFL game. I, I don't agree with his stance, but I, I, I understand where he's coming from. It's just the NFL sucks up a lot of oxygen in the room uh, when you don't have a local team in the CFL. So mm-hmm. really, it's it's a beginning of, of that excitement. Now, the comments, is it going to be an embarrassment? It will not be an embarrassment. That much, you know, if, if there's been an embarrassment to date, it's that, you know, admittedly, we haven't started the full, full-on marketing campaign that will happen here in the next couple of weeks. But the interesting point about the overpriced tickets, um, that's actually been proven to be not the case. The majority of tickets that have been sold to date are, uh, ironically, the more higher-end tickets. So where we feel that we would agree that we need to do a better job of ensuring that people who want to access this game have the ability to do so is ensuring that we have, we like we haven't released a family zone, which I think is critically important. Um, you know, so those are the things, but as I indicated, we're working with our sponsors, our partners who want to be a part of this game, who are excited about the long-term potential and, and want to, you know, their, their involvement being allowing and helping people get to this game. So look, Again, when, when there's an absence of any dialogue coming from the proponents, and in this case us, I get it. People are going to come up with their own theories. And look, the easiest, easiest thing in the world to try to do is to try to look smart by going negative. It, it, you know, that, that's, mm-hmm. you know, so if, if people want to do it, knock yourself out. That's not the way I'm going to go about things. Uh, you know, we're focused on this in a positive manner. But at the same time, we're also focused on hopefully – you know, yourselves and people that listen to this podcast understand, hey, we're not sitting here, you know, with smoke and mirrors and and saying that everything's honky dory. And, and, you know, we're saying we've made some mistakes and we're going to fix it. And I think that, you know, the biggest message that's come out of that is we're a group that has already shown that we're going to listen to what people say. We've already illustrated that with the start time. And now we're going to put together, you know, some packages that make sense for people. So, it, it, look, I get it, but uh, stay tuned would be my, my end result, my, my end comment. Yeah, you hit it right on the, on the head. It's the waiting game right now, and people need to figure out something to do with their time. And you're right. The easiest thing to do is try to sound smart and stir up negativity. That's definitely what's happening. And our goal is to pour water on as many of those fires as we possibly can and make sure the facts are straight. So um, I appreciate uh, everything you've said so far because I, I can't wait to see what's coming next because once the needle starts moving on this thing, then maybe the chatter will, will turn to the positive. Oh, 100%. 100% agreed. Well, there you go. Listen, Anthony, uh, I, you know, there was a lot of stuff that I had written down of questions I wanted to ask you, but you really have hit, and you've hit a lot of those answers in your comments. You've been very open with us and, and telling us everything we need to know about not just the schooners, but touchdown Atlantic. And, uh, I've mentioned this to Andy numerous times that, uh, you know, our goal when we when we started our podcast, uh, you know, we were we were basically an NFL podcast, and somehow, some way, two years ago, we started a CFL dedicated CFL uh, program, and it's been remarkable how many listeners we've picked up, not just in the region but across Canada. And the day that we found out you guys were looking at bringing a team here, it has sparked our interest even more in the CFL which is kind of what led to my uh, recent article that I wrote is I'm really trying to be a CFL fan and I can't wait to get the announcement that the CFL is actually coming to Atlantic Canada. That's what I'm really waiting for. That's I can't wait to hear those words from your mouth. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I, I can't wait for the day that I get to utter them, and then I'm going to probably disappear for a couple of days and, and uh, just <laughs> relax. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I, guys, I appreciate everything you guys are doing to grow the game. And, you know, my final comment to you is I get it. Look, I've, I've been an NFL fan, uh, you know, in a very – I shouldn't say this in – territory but the sad new york jet season ticket holder for many many years um but i really got into the cfl when the red blacks you know when ottawa came back into the cfl because i'm you know my primary residence is ottawa i got season tickets and you know once you go you guys know this once you go and you start watching cfl football i mean it is an exciting brand of football and also more importantly from a live sport perspective I have to say it's one of the, certainly the best bang for your buck, and it is an exciting, I mean, I just went a couple of weeks ago, took my six-year-old daughter to an exhibition game. She didn't want to leave. I mean, like, it, it's an exciting place to be, and once people experience that, I think you'll start to see that needle start to swing. I'm not saying that the NFL is going to disappear far from it. It's a great league. It's a great sport, but I think that there's a lot of room for this for the CFL in this market, and I think we'll prove that. Perfect, Anthony. Listen, um, you're right about this being Patriots country out this way, but if you need a podcast in this area to bash the Patriots on, you found the right one, my friend. So <laughs> don't worry about a thing. Listen, you're a busy man. We're going to let you uh, get on with your evening. Thanks again, Anthony. We appreciate it. We hope to talk to you again down the road. You got it. Thanks, guys. Talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Bye.